Hi, I'm Nadej Sezana. I go by Nan. I'm the Cravings Coach. It's so good to see you again on this channel and in this series of talks about why I'm not a weight loss coach and why it's so much more rewarding to focus on concurring our food cravings for good rather than simply focus on weight loss. So as I said in previous videos, I could introduce myself as a weight loss coach. After all, I got certified through Brooke Castillo's Life Coach School and also through Corinne Crabtree's No BS University. And I've also served hundreds, if not thousands, of clients losing weight. I've helped them lose weight. So I could introduce myself as a weight loss coach, but I'm choosing not to. And what I'm really interested in and what I'm really passionate about is helping my audience, audience and my clients really reclaim them pow their power and really decide for themselves what they do want, what they want in terms of their body or their health, but also their eating habits. And that means that you get to decide what to think about the numbers on the scale or on the tape measurer or the words from a doctor or total stranger, right? We talked about that before and What's really so important for me is that you get to decide what's a problem worthy of your attention, right? And what's not a problem, regardless of what others might tell us. Very important. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today. Society's very strong incentive on weight loss, as if it was the solution to everything. Well, of course, I'm um, caricaturing, but let's dive in. So we hear it all the time in our Western society, in particular around summertime or in January, but not exclusively. And for instance, I had a look at uh, magazine covers that urge us to drop a dress size, that's on women's health, or slim for Christmas, that's on health and fitness, or shed 10 pounds fast, that's on fitness magazine, right? The idea is that we should get slimmer, leaner, smaller, and in order to do so, drop, shed, lose weight, and it's everywhere around us, all right? We can't escape that messaging. But the fact that this expectation is very present around us doesn't mean we should agree with it. That's where our power lies, right? Losing weight, the way we see this on magazine covers, because I'm just focusing on that, but I could think about commercials or documentaries on TV and so on. But losing weight, is actually an invitation, a suggestion, a proposition from those different media, right? From our society. And it still remains an option. It's not an order, even if the, the style on magazine covers sounds very much like an order because it's the, they use the imperative, but we know that it's to shorten their message, right? To make it more impactful. It is not an order. We can do as we please, we don't have to obey, right? We have that free will. We get to decide what we want to do. We are the authority in our lives. We get to choose. Super important, super powerful too. So I'm going to share the times here, but when we read a headline like drop a dress size, we can interpret it in very different ways. I'm going to focus on three for the sake of, you know, time, for instance, but we could interpret this as first, I should really drop a dress size right now. That could be an option, right? When we read the, the message, we could think this way. Or I could drop a dress size, yeah, why not? That's the second option. A third option could be, I'm invited to drop a dress size, but I don't see the point. No, thank you, right? Three very different ways of interpreting the message we see on magazine covers. But then notice how we feel when we interpret the magazine's cover, the magazine headline, in a particular way. If we're choosing to see it as, I should really drop a size, a dress size right now, then we might feel an urgency, a form of panic, and maybe shame, right, around our body size. If we decide to interpret the invitation as, I could drop a dress size, why not? then we're probably going to feel some form of acceptance and also openness. And if we decide to interpret the headline as, I'm invited to drop a dress size, but I don't see the point, 
no thank you, then we're probably going to feel something along the lines of disinterest and also self-confidence, right? What's super interesting is that, as always, the way we feel fuels what we do, right? Or behavior comes from the way we feel. So our brain will look for evidence that what we're thinking, the way we're interpreting the headline, um, is relevant, is uh, yeah, is it's true. So when we think I should really drop a dress size right now and we feel shame, then we'll probably notice the evidence, maybe the fat falls, maybe the skirt that we can't zip up, or maybe that we get out of breath when we climb the stairs and so on, right? We shame will probably bring in more opinions from other people, like maybe what our mum said, what our total stranger said about us. But it means that then we're focusing on others' opinions of our body, right? We're focusing externally. And um, we're focusing on meeting somebody else's expectations of our body, of the way we are, so that then we probably want to feel accepted, we want to have this sense of belonging, which makes perfect sense. Because as human beings, we belong in tribes. We want to be part of the tribe. So if we think that we need to conform to have a body that meets society's standards, and then we feel safe, it makes perfect sense that, yes, we would feel a sense of shame, a sense of panic, a sense of urgency, when we interpret drop a dress size now as, oh, yes, I should really do that right now. Okay, so it makes perfect sense. But notice also that if we decide to feel open, just, oh, yeah, that's an invitation to drop a dress size, why not? We're then going to feel perhaps open and accepting, and then we're probably going to focus more um, internally. What do I want for me? How do I want to address this uh, weight loss thing? How do I want to adapt it to my lifestyle? How do I want to adjust what's not working um, to, so that it fits my needs? And it's probably going to be some form of very kind, a very gentle way to approach, to approach weight loss. And then notice that if we decide to think, well, I'm invited to drop a dress size, but no, it's not for me. Thank you very much. And then we're in that place of disinterest and self-confidence. And we'll gather evidence that this invitation is irrelevant to us because we'll probably find evidence that we're feeling good, actually, in our body. We're loving ourselves no matter what. And we don't have health issues. Nothing's worrying for us. So we'll move on to something else. And we won't have any drama about that. It's just whoop, moving on. <laughs> and notice also that depending on the way we react, right, the way we think about the proposition from the magazine's cover, the way we feel about it, the way we act towards that invitation, then of course it's going to have a different impact in our lives. So depending on the thought, and of course these are three optional thoughts that I'm working on, that I'm offering to you, but there are plenty of those. But if we focus on the three ways of interpreting a magazine's cover, a magazine's headline, then we're going to create three very different results. From the place of, I should really drop a dress size right now, we probably, as a result, disconnect from ourselves and all true desires because we're only focusing on the outside, okay? What's expected of us or what we think, of course, is expected of us. And then we know that from that place of disconnection from ourselves, it's really hard to actually do something, to actually lose weight because we're not really motivated intrinsically. It's not coming from our inner desire, right? And if we ever achieve that weight loss goal, then it probably won't last long because it's not really in our best interests to conform to a standard that was established by somebody else, right? So we can bear that in mind that depending on the way we lose the weight, if it's focused externally, it's probably not going to be long lasting. We can imagine that coming from that place of, yeah, I could drop a dress size, why not? Which is open and detached, kind of detached then we're probably going to reach that weight loss goal, but in all own terms. And we'll probably renegotiate the goal, probably is going to change. 
into a fitness goal or happiness goal or something that really suits us, right? And notice that if we're discard discarding, dismissing the invitation to lose weight because we don't see the point, it's irrelevant to us, no thank you, then we're probably going to stay true to ourselves and our true desires. We're going to probably stay in our own team, be our own best friend, because the main thing is that we have our best interest at heart, first and foremost, and the rest is irrelevant, right? My main point is that we get to choose what we want to do when we hear these messages coming from society, especially around summer, especially around the new year, okay? There are propositions, the messages are propositions. We don't have to accept, to agree, to approve of them, right? And this is really the work that I do with my clients. I help them really distinguish, distinguish the different options from society. Do they want to agree with this message or not? Right. And do they really want to lose weight for their own good? Or do they feel that they should, that it's expected of them? Very different way to approach this. And we see that it creates a very different experience. It creates a very different outcome. So it's really important to know the distinction. And we get to know the, the difference, the distinction, by checking with ourselves. What are the reasons for us to lose weight? And do we like them, right? So if you want to lose weight, there's nothing wrong with this, right? I'm really, <laughs> I really want to be clear about that. There's nothing wrong with this, but just check with yourself that you know why you want to lose weight. And then what do you think of your reasons to lose weight? Do you like those reasons and why? It's really interesting because the clearer you are in your brain, the less room there will be for your brain to renegotiate. Okay. And we know that if we don't have room to renegotiate, then you'll have strong motivation to actually get to your goal. So it's super important for you, right? So here are the questions I'm inviting you to ask yourself again. Do you want to lose the weight? Be honest with yourself, be authentic with yourself. Nobody cares, nobody needs to know. If you want to share, of course, you're welcome, but it's really for you, right? So do you really want to lose the weight if you're honest with yourself and why? What do you think of each of your reasons? If there are several reasons, what do you think of your reasons to lose weight? Do you like them? Do you like each of them and why? And you may have a myriad of reasons to lose weight if that's what you want. And some you may like more than others. It's okay. It's okay. We are not, you know, flat people, flat characters from a novel. No, it's just like a, a disco ball, plenty of different facets. They all get to exist, right? They are all welcome. It's your identity, it's your personality, it's who you are right now, it's all fine. And if you want to know my honest opinion, personally, I don't think we should all be slim, thin, a particular size, a particular weight, or a particular BMI. We are not generic human beings. We are individuals, right? It sounds so obvious, but really, I think it's it's worth mentioning it again and again and again. We are different from the, the next person next to us. So it makes perfect sense that we may want to live our own lives. It's just like, yeah, we may be side by side on a highway, right? We may be the same age or we may have the same, um, the same job, maybe life coaches together. All right, but it doesn't mean that we get to go to the same place. We still get to experience or life the way we choose to. So I hate this idea of one size fits all, the cookie cutter thing. Yes, and I also, I'd so also, I'm very uncomfortable with the fact that we should lose a part of us. If it's body fat, if it's uh, weight, as if we needed to eliminate a part of us to fit into society, to conform, as if it was shameful to have fat on a body or to have a certain number on the scales. I think it's ridiculous, right? We don't need to lose a part of us to belong to society, right? 
So rather than losing, I personally love focusing on what we want to gain. Like maybe if we're focusing on body, on the body, some flexibility. Or if we're focusing on personal skills, like strength, inner strength, emotional strength, or self-confidence. I think it's so much more inspiring, right? And um, what I don't like about weight loss is that it's so limited. We're going to talk about that again, but that's really something that I find a bit sad, really, because once you've lost the weight, once you reach the number, then what? Whereas if you're building your strength or your resilience, for instance, it's a never ending process. You get to explore, you get to uncover some new sides of your personality, some new skills, a new depth in you that you never even knew existed. So I think it's much more interesting. So there's also something else that I like to question is that, okay, we see this message everywhere that, yeah, lose weight, drop a dress size or whatever. And I wonder why is it is this message everywhere? What are the benefits for the magazine maybe or for society to keep having this message that we should lose weight? So sure, in some cases, it may be for health reasons. Right? It makes sense, for instance, uh, when it's coming from um, health organizations, it makes sense. They want to protect us. But then I always like to question it. Okay, so why is they really interested in our in our health, what are the other ways that they could actually promote health, help us be more, well, be healthier? Why don't they take measures to maybe uh, remove um, junk food from easy access? Or I know that in some countries, um, water is more expensive than buying soda. Doesn't make any sense, right? So why don't they take measures to have more fruit and vegetables in commercials maybe or available you know easily so that's the one thing okay if it's for health reasons that this messaging is everywhere i want still to question it and to see but is it relevant is it does it make sense right and i also wonder if Having us focus on weight loss is not to keep us in line, right? To keep us focusing on something so that we don't focus on something else. Because if we focus on weight loss constantly and are we the right size, uh, are, we, are we the right weight, then we have less time, we have less energy to focus on other things. And if we're particularly ashamed of our body or health, then I know that for myself, I lay low, I make myself small, and I don't express myself as much as I could, right? So I wonder if there's not a hidden interest behind this very strong messaging that we should lose weight. So maybe it's a way to keep our minds busy on self-criticism instead of having us contribute and share our amazing truth and our amazing gifts to the world, to make the world a better place, to make a world that maybe looks like us a bit more. So to conclude, to finish, I really want to invite you to be curious about what you want and why you want it. So you should lose weight is an opinion from society. And I really want you to investigate, to question, to challenge your desire to lose weight if that's what you want. Do you want to say yes? to this invitation to lose weight? Do you want to believe it and really own your decision that, yes, I want to lose weight and the, here are my reasons and I love them? Or do you want to decline it, to discard it as if, yeah, it's irrelevant? And all the other options, of course, that I didn't mention here. So do you want to approve of that proposition so that you, your body, your behavior fits a standard, and we know that it's going to be temporary, right? So we, we want to be clear also that it's probably not going to create the happiness or the self-confidence that we want, right? Or would you rather be healthy overall, I mean, physically, but also emotionally, but also intellectually, and at ease in our own skin because we are aligned with what we want and we got it, we gave it to ourselves as the best gift. So, or do you want to accept yourself, body included? 
which doesn't mean that you don't get to change your body if you want or your weight if you want to, but from a very different place. And that's really what I want you to, to think about. Are you operating from a place of self-loathing, shame, or on the contrary, of acceptance, self-love, curiosity, compassion? My whole point is this. Whose voice do you want to listen to? An external voice? A suggestion or your inner voice what you really want to do for yourself because you love yourself so much because you care about yourself so much and that may not be the case i know that i hated myself for such a long time so i got to actually work on that change the way i thought and felt about myself and i'm in that place now that whatever i'm doing i'm doing it for myself right not to please or to hope i'll please somebody else very different it's so much better <laughs> so i just want to make sure that you do feel good about your decision and you may agree with that of that invitation from society that you should lose weight by summer and it's okay you get to choose nobody gets to choose but you but i also want to make sure that you're doing it from a place where it's realistic and where it's not harmful to your well-being in any way so the question I'm going to leave you with today is this one. If you want to lose weight, why? And I want you to dig a little deeper than you may have done today. We always want to do things because of the way we think we'll feel when we reach this goal. So for instance, if you want to weigh a certain number, it's because you think that when you reach the number, when you see the number on the scale, then you'll get to feel a certain way. So this is what I want you to focus on now is just if you were to give me one emotion or maybe it's going to be a palette of different emotions, but what are they? How do you want to feel when you lose the weight? And of course it works if you have a different goal. Like for instance, my goal is to drop my body fat to be stronger. And so what are the emotions that you want to feel once you see a particular number as far as your body fat is concerned? Or if you can do a certain number of chin-ups, what do you want to feel when you get to that place, right? So um, this is really interesting and we'll talk that about that more in the next episode. Um, because the exciting thing is that maybe you don't need to actually see that number to feel that way. We'll talk about that more. But for the time being, this is what I want to leave you with. Thank you so much for following me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was inspiring. As always, if you want to reach out to me to tell me what you uncovered thanks to that episode, thanks to the questions I asked, well, yes, please feel free to reach out to me. There are different ways you can do that. My email address is nscoaching at outlook.fr. You can also find me on Instagram at nan.cezana.coaching, right? And I'd be very happy to connect with you and to chat with you. But also, if you are considering working with me, know that it's possible, right? All you need to do is simply book your Crave Control Consultation Code, in which you and I, all alone, are going to explore what it would be like for you to have conquered your food cravings for good. This is key, and this is so much fun, right? We get to explore what your life would be like, what your body would be like, what your health would be like, once you've actually mastered your emotional eating patterns, right? What would be possible for you then? It's super fun. And then we get to see what are the different paths that are available to you to actually conquer your food cravings for good, to not be the victim of your desires, but you'd be, to be, on the contrary, in control of your eating behavior, to be what I call a cravings queen or king. No problem there, right? And it's so much fun. And I get to tell you about my program if that's something that you want. If not, no problem there. But my program is all about understanding why you crave certain foods at certain time, maybe, and how you can actually 
decrease this desire for certain food, which makes it then so easy to decline the food. I love that pattern. I love taking my clients through those three simple steps, understanding, decreasing, declining. It is so powerful. It's so life-changing, right? So if that's something you might be interested in, if you're ready to do what you want to do with your life and to really step into that empowered self who decides what she, what he, what they want to do with their own health, body and happiness, then I'm inviting you to join me on this Crave Control Consultation call. You're going to find the link to book your call tomorrow, next week, right? As soon as you want to below this video. Thank you so much again for watching me and I'm going to wish you a beautiful rest of your day. See you soon. Take care. Bye.